All righty, body of Christ. Um, this is a word just to carry you from this year into the new year. I want people to leave the pain, the sorrow, the judgment, the anger towards other people, toward God, towards situations. I want you to leave it in 2018. I've been trying to watch the shop for a couple of days and I finally got it to watch it, right? Um, I've seen it many a times, but whenever I feel in my spirit, I need to watch it again. I watch it because there's always a new message in there. So I want to share with the body of Christ this evening the last sermon that I will do for 2018. So Heavenly Father, I know that there's a heaviness. I know that there's a grieving. I know there's a confusion. I know there's a lot of mixed emotions on things that took place, people, places, and things this year, Father. But as your word is coming through me this evening, Father, even myself, who hasn't lived the holiest of holy lives, Lord, I come before you because I too had questions, Lord, and I too fell into judgmentalness. I too fell into areas of life that made no sense because of the trials and tribulations that you allowed or that the enemy was allowed to do to me, Lord. And I know I'm not the only one, Lord, even though I may be the only one to confess it publicly, I know I have erred in this way. But I'm leaving all this in 2018 as I ask my brothers and sisters to do the same thing. For 2018 carried a lot of pain, a lot of sorrow, a lot of death, a lot of injury, a lot of sickness, a lot of things that took place that questioned people's faith, questioned their, their love for you, wondering, was you there, Lord God? People that are being real with themselves, knowing that that, those, that one trial was just a little bit too much to bear, but then you came through. So Father, as I share this word tonight, may you get all the praise, honor, and glory as you heal my brothers and sisters this evening and uh, January, uh, December 31st, 2018 at 9.03 p.m. In Jesus' name, amen. This, I'm going to read to you what I got, and then I'm going to read to you the scriptures that came to me toward the end of this movie. And I actually, the ending part is on now, but I had a, a unction to share this with you now. God's wrath was placed on Jesus for all mankind. A lot of us think that Christ, that, G, that God is, has this wrath or this anger or this disappointment in us when he took all of that and he placed it on Jesus Christ. As Jesus Christ was being whipped and stripped and degraded and spit on and beaten and his flesh torn off his body, each one of those stripes, each one of those punches, each one of those things that Jesus Christ went through he went through to fulfill God's wrath, the punishment, the payment for all of us, for every single person on the face of the earth who will confess that Christ is their Lord and Savior out of their mouth and believe in their heart. That's what he did. He's not out to hurt us. He's not out to punish us. His chastening is to bring us into correction to guide us and to heal us. So when you think that God is after you, when you think God has forgotten you, when you think God is angry at you, he's not. He took all that and he placed it on Christ. You grieve his spirit when you do wrong. That's why the Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. So you have to get that first into your head so you can understand that that price for sin was already paid. Two, what we see as a disaster, God sees as an opportunity to show his love and grace where sorrow is. 
a lot of what we went through this year, God had a purpose for allowing it and even orchestrating some of it because of his plan and his purpose. We may not see it, we may not understand it, but there's things that God did in us and through us that only could be done through those situations that he either orchestrated or that he allowed. It strengthened you, it brought encouragement, it brought faith, you know, it brought discouragement, it brought chaos, it brought confusion, it brought a whole lot of things. But all these things were mixed in a bowl to make you into the person you're supposed to become because that doubt, that despair, that sor sorrow, that lack of faith will be overran by encouragement, by building up your faith, by forgiveness, and by trusting in the Lord. All these things took place to build you up into the holy temple that you are. Sin brings its own punishment, not God. When we sin, sin will fulfill its own punishment to us because the punishment that God gave us for sin, he placed on Jesus. When he placed it on Jesus, Jesus took all that upon himself. That's why he is the payment for us on that cross. The sin that we do, it brings torment, it builds grief, it brings a whole lot of things mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially that happens to us. If we walk the way that God is telling us to walk, of course there will be obstacles that are coming, but sin has its own payment, brothers and sisters. In the book of James, it says one is led away when they are they are led by their own enticement. And then it talks about falling into sin and how the end of sin is death. So we have to understand that if we get enticed and all of us get enticed, we need to stop acting like we're these really good two-shoes two shoes, Christians. We all have a weakness. We all have a flaw. We all have things that we need to work on and ain't no one better than the next one. And that's going to lead up to the scriptures that I have to read. And hopefully this will sink in to help you relieve and to allow some people to grow once you hear these scriptures. And the last thing I wrote, what you see as a mess becomes a message of healing for someone else. The mess that you went through, the trial you went through, the sorrow you went through, the disappointment you went through, the death you went through. In Corinthians chapter 2, I believe, in 2 Corinthians, <coughs> forgive me, I'm still getting over this cold. In 2 Corinthians, it talks about how we've endured these things to be encouragement to someone else because Christ was encouragement to us. He was healing to us. He was everything to us. And we tend to share that with people to encourage them. So the mess that we went through becomes a message in our testimony, which becomes healing, which becomes deliverance, which becomes hope for somebody else. Because a lot of people think like, I can't be like Pastor Ronnie. I can't be like Sister So-and-So. I can't be like Brother So-and-So because they're deeper into God. No, we're all fighting our own little wars within our flesh, within our minds, and within our hearts, which leads me to this. And as I was watching this movie, I always get a revelation of, of Jesus and God in different ways. That's why I watch it, because it makes me think about how holy I'm not being, how closer to God I could be, how... I lack in areas because of myself, not because of God, Jesus, or the Holy Spirit. And so when I get this, it's like a revival that starts up in my heart. It's like a rejuvenation. It's like a revival that just takes off inside of me. But I want to read this to you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, 
Let me remove the speck from your eye. And look, a plank is in your eye. Hypocrite. First remove the plank from your own eye. And then you will see closely to remove the speck from your brother's eye. That was Matthew chapter 7, 1 through 5. Every one of us is fighting a battle. Every one of us is going through a trial. Every one of us is going through a temptation. Where you may have been delivered, this other person's not being been delivered. Where you may be growing stronger, this person may still be weak at. You don't know the battles that someone else is facing that may be throwing it off on you. That person that's talking down to you. That relationship that's falling apart. That marriage that's on the brink of divorce. That child that is not listening to the parent. That parent that's disrespecting their child. All these things are manifestations of what people have been through or what people are going through. And I fall a, 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 a victim to this as well because a lot of times I have to check myself and remember, especially when I'm in those jails and in those prisons, what that other person is dealing with, what that other trial that person is dealing with. What am I preaching on that's bringing up something in that person's life that they haven't been delivered from? What am I saying on these services that I do to you that you haven't been delivered from, that you haven't been healed from, that you're still going through, wondering why this is happening, why this person is doing that, why these things are taking place in your life? What we have to understand is everybody has been through something or is going through something and not everybody has overcome yet. That's why we're not to judge nobody. Even when you're bringing correction to someone, the Bible says in Galatians 6, 1, to do it in love, lest you fall into temptation. We are all fighting something. Now, this year of 2018, I know I prayed for a lot of people that lost family members, that went through trials and tribulations, who went through so much and their faith was shaken. I mean, shaken to the very core of their being. And they wondered, where was God? Why did he allow this to happen? But what we have to understand is that there is a devil out there. And sometimes God allows things to happen for a greater purpose. You have to think of Jesus. Jesus, before the foundations of the earth, knew he was going to have to die in our place. God had a purpose for what Jesus was going to do. But he had to allow that purpose to take place in order for salvation to come to us. So a lot of times you're looking at these deaths and these sorrows and these homelessness and these evictions and these loss of the job. A lot of times there's a bigger, grander purpose going on than we can see. Even for the person that's going through something, if we show that person love when they're at their weakest, then we understand that we are doing the will of God. Even in that marriage, even if that marriage doesn't work, even if that relationship doesn't work, even if divorce comes, even if that kid leaves, even if the husband or the wife decides that they're done, God says in Romans 8, 28, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his plan and his purpose. So he's allowed some things to take place for the greater purpose that he has. There is a season for everything. I was telling someone the other day, there is a season for people to be in your lives. Some people will be there continuously. Some people will be there for just a season and a short time. But whatever purpose that that person, place, or thing is there, that God has allowed it to be there, is to fulfill a purpose. This year in 2018, there was a lot of things that took place that you may not ever get an understanding to, but you got to believe and trust that Romans 8, 28 is real and that Jeremiah 29, 11 through 14, for God knows the plans that he has for you, plans to bring you peace and hope. He has a perfect plan and some of this chaos, some of this torment, some of this destruction, some of this loss, some of this pain, some of this all, this is all part of a greater purpose, especially if you have a ministry, you have to be able to be solid as a rock for when the devil does come at you, that he won't be able to shake you the way he did last year, the way he did five years ago, the way he did two months ago, the way he did 10 years ago. 
our faith has to grow into a place when someone comes at us, we will be able to stand in that fight. The ministry that you're in, that you won't buckle when it, when your church goes from a thousand people to a hundred people or from 500 people to five people. When your wife and your kids are just tired and fed up because they don't see God working through the man of God the way that he said it, that that man of God won't give up on God and do things the way the world wants it to be done to please his wife and his kids or vice versa. We have to stay the course. We have to remember all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. So remember one thing, the person that you're dealing with, they're fighting their own demons, their own battles, their own trials, their own tribulations. We're to give them grace as God gave us grace. I really want you to get that. Watching this movie, The Shock, really opens up my eyes because we become judges to people. We become judges in our relationships. We become judges in our families. And instead of guiding people and leading people, we start to tell people what they need to do and how they need to do it because that's the way we're doing it. That's not it. They got to do it the way God is telling them to do it. And we just have to make sure that what they're doing, what they're saying, how they're walking, how they're acting lines up <coughs> Excuse me, with the will of God. We have to understand that there's a lot of Christians that I know that I that call themselves Christians and, and are anointed, but they live real worldly. They still do a lot of worldly things, and it's because that's what they choose to do. But if God is giving them the grace to do that, he may not be giving you the grace to do that. And that's biblical. God says, if your heart doesn't condemn you, then it's, that's, that's between you and God. You know, you have to understand something. We're here to walk in love and not to walk into in judgment. Grace has a lot of different meanings, but grace is given to those who are weak. And those of us that are stronger, we need to not be so judgmental and so hard on the next person because we don't know what they're dealing with. And our judgmentalness can tip them over that plank. And let me tell you, I'm telling you errors that I make. And I'm still working on it. God is still perfecting in me. And I'm still working on it because sometimes my words come out my mouth. And I remember <laughs> a sister told me that I was militant. And, you know, from being in prison and being in gangs and, and dealing with the prisons and the ministry in the prisons and the jails, a part of me tends to stay that way that I have to work on because I need to know who to be that way to because not everybody deserves that. We have to be very careful. And you men, start loving your wives and your girlfriends and your children with the love of God. And wives, respect your men as men of God. And where they're erring, go to First Peter. You, you relationships, you husbands, you wives, you engaged your boyfriends and girlfriends. Do it the way the Bible says it. The Bible tells a child to respect and honor their parents. You have to be an example of that so your kids can have an example of how they should walk in this life that is so crooked and demented. You are their first examples. When I look at my kids, I ask myself, am I a good example of Christ to my kids? So what they see in the world cannot match their father. I have to be totally different than the world. And it's not easy because I get judged by my family too. But you know what? It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, I have to ask myself, how is God seeing me? And am I doing things God's way? And I and I know I said a lot in this, this one message that wasn't even meant to be this long, but there was a lot of fruit. There was a lot of fruit in this message that even for myself, I'm going to go back and listen to this and re-listen to it because I know that there was a lot in here. And I'm going to end on this. Leave everything that happened this year in this year. Start your new year out fresh. Some of you won't hear this message until tomorrow because you're out doing what you maybe shouldn't be doing or you're out doing something that you should be doing. But a lot of you are going to hear this message tonight. Start your new year off right. If you're awake at 12 o'clock, thank God that you made it into midnight and made it into the new year. Start that with him. If not, when you get up tomorrow, make that your first priority. Make that how you start off the new year. Because the Bible says in Matthew 6, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness 
and all these things will be added to you. So Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for presenting this last message of 2018 from Saved by Grace Ministries through my voice of Pastor Ronnie Muniz to the body of Christ, Heavenly Father. I thank you, I praise you, and I honor you. And I ask for forgiveness of my sins, my children's sins, and my family's sins, Lord God. I ask that you will forgive them and wash them in the blood of Jesus, Lord, and just help us to walk a better, holier, productive life for the body of Christ, for the kingdom of glory, Lord God. Lord, Heavenly Father, move in me, move through me, move by me, move for the body of Christ through me, Lord God, that in 2019, I may be able to be a better example of Jesus Christ who lives in me and who lives through me. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.